Hi everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. So you just became a records officer, now what? I'm Avalon Snell, a records and information management specialist with Utah State Archives and Records Service. Now, I understand that the thought of records management can be very overwhelming, regardless of if it's your only position or if it's one of multiple responsibilities that you have um, within your agency. And so I hope that today you just take away first steps on how to get started, um, some resources available to you for help, and a little bit of confidence in knowing that you can do this. Uh, I'd also like to point out that uh, this is streaming live. So if you have any questions um, during the presentation, feel free to use the chat box and a room specialist will answer you as quickly as possible. So today we're briefly going to talk about um, records officer certification, navigating relevant websites, um, records management basics, an introduction to records access and grandma, how to find your agency's records, and some resources available to you. So you just became an appointed records officer. Um, what is that? So as the records officer, you're responsible for maintaining your agency's um, records appropriately according to the law, to your mandates, um, and to um, your administrative rules. Um, I want you to know that you are an, an important asset to your team. You are vital. Um, without records management, there would just be chaos in your agency. So I hope that you realize how important of a job that you actually have. Um, and know that we're here, uh, we RIM specialists are here to help you. Um, so if you ever have any questions or any problems, please feel free to contact us. Um, and I'll put our contact information up at the end of this presentation. So the very first step, once you've become an appointed records officer, is to take the certification test. Um, certification is required by law, um, and it's required to be done online. Um, you, there are two tests. You can choose between records management essentials or grandma. Um, essentials. You don't need to take both, but you're welcome to if you want to. Um, you need a 75% to pass. You can take it as many times as you like. Um, and after the test, you'll be able to see the questions you missed and what answer you gave. Um, we won't give you the right answer. Um, so if you go back to take the test, we want you to do a little bit more reading um, or reach out to your room specialist. Um, for clarification. And I would like to point out that it's open book, open resource, open whatever. Um, so you can have any training materials you'd like open on another tab while you're taking the test. So there are two ways to log on to the test. The first is through the open records portal, and the second is through our website. Um, you will need a state login so if you haven't registered as a records officer before, or if you haven't let us uh, know you're a new records officer, please just contact us. We'll make sure you're put in the system um, and we'll get you set up with your agency and then we can help you register as a records officer. So I'm actually gonna take you to these websites to show you how to get, so sorry about this. So this is how you get to the tests, because I know it can be a little confusing sometimes. So the first way is openrecords.utah.gov. So it takes you to the open records portal. This is where the public can go um, to submit grandma requests. And this is also going to be your dashboard for people who see grandma requests or just to maintain your certification. So you're going to come to the right hand side for login. And as I said, you need to have a Utah ID. So if you haven't registered as a records officer, please contact us. Um, and we can get you in the system and get you going. Um, you can also contact Dylan Mace. He's the administrator for this website. Um, he can help you as well. And his contact information will be up at the end of this presentation. So you're going to log in.
you can see down here, I now have a dashboard. You're going to head to the dashboard. And it gives you this nice bit dashboard with notifications, news. And then if I were a grandma responder, I would have all my records requests down here at the bottom. So you can leave it on this dashboard or you can come up to the tabs and um, click on individual information. So the one you want to take the test is training. So it'll bring you to training materials, which you can choose either the um, grandma essentials or records management essentials. You can also choose to take the test from here if you would like. Or you can come down to certification if you're ready to go. And as you can see, there's a reminder that I expired last month. I need to renew the test. Um, and again, it gives you the two choices for either grandma essentials or records management essentials. And it also has the um, training material that you can leave open while you click back into the test. So you'll start the test. It's got instructions. And then as you can see, here's the first module all the way down. Um, you can do the test all in one sitting. Um, you can do it module by module and come back. It really just depends on how much time you have. Um, plan on it being about an hour to complete the test um, all the way through. So the next um, option you have to get to the certification page is to go to our website, archives.utah.gov. You're going to head down to records management and to certification. Um, you'll have access to the same training materials that were on the open records portal. So either for grandma essentials or records management essentials. And then you'll come down here to take the test. And as you can see, it takes you straight back to the open records portal in that same page. So it's personal preference, whichever, whichever which either way you want to use um, to get to the test, um, which bookmark you think would be more relevant to you, you can do it either way. Okay, so let's get into some records management basics. Um, why do you even need to do records management? Um, really, it's all about um, helping your agency, helping your processes, and um, mitigating your risk. Um, if you are implementing records management appropriately um, and following retention and disposition, um, you are going to be deleting things or shredding things that need to be deleted and shredded, or you're going to be keeping things that need to be kept. Um, reducing your liability. And if you know where to find your records, um, if you know who's producing them, if you know how they're labeled, um, they're, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to find them, um, especially if you're responding like to a grandma request where there's a timeline. Um, just knowing how your records are created and stored is going to make it um, a lot easier for you. And it'll make your agency happy because you're going to save them money. Um, on both digital storage and physical storage. So if you think about your office space, um, how many filing cabinets do you have? How many hard drives and thumb drives do you have laying around? Um, how much space is taken up by paper and by things and records? And similarly on your server, you know, how much data do you, are you paying for um, on your server? How, much, how many records? Do you even know how much is on your server? Um, if you manage your records appropriately, um, the, you know, the physical and the electronic records you don't need um, can just be gotten rid of, and it's going to save you some money. And then it also shows um, the public that you are responsible um, because you do manage your records according um, to grandma. So in records management, there is a lot of lingo. Um, I'm going to explain some of it briefly that you might encounter while you work with your RIM specialist um, or even other um, records managers um, across agencies. So RIM, Records and Information Management. ARO, Appointed Records Officer, so that is you. Uh, the CAO, the Chief Administrative Officer. 
So the CIO can be um, your division director, deputy director, um, county commissioner, the mayor. It really depends on the type of agency um, that you work for. But odds are you know who your CAO is because they appointed you uh, to be a records officer. And that is the main responsibility of CAOs is to make sure that your agency information and your records officer information um, is current with state archives. So you'll hear us talk a lot about series. Um, a series uh, is a group of similar records with the same retention and the same disposition. So for instance, financial records, if you're a local government, you just have to keep your accounts payable and receivable for four years and then you can shred them. So it makes sense to keep all of that together in a series if you're going to be getting rid of them at the same time and in the same manner. So retention is the length of time a record needs to be kept. So retention can, is based on either a general retention schedule that we create at State Archives, um, a series specific retention schedule, um, which we'll talk a little bit about later, um, but you can see the acronym, acronym down at the bottom there. Um, or it can be um, created um, in-house and approved by your governing body, um, which again, we'll talk about later. So disposition is the final outcome of the record after retention is over. Um, there are only two dispositions. You either destroy it or you keep it forever and send it to archives. Um, and we'll go through um, what that means and how you can tell what the disposition is supposed to be. So PNW is a public notice website. It's the website you're required to post um, meeting minutes, agendas, meeting materials, um, any kind of public notice um, that you're required to post goes on the public notice website. So then Open Records Portal, um, that's the website I just showed you. It's where um, the public can go to respond to grammar or submit grammar requests and where you would go to certify or respond to grammar. And then General Retention Schedule, those are retention schedules that we create at Archives that are meant to be really broad that everyone can use, whether you're um, a state agency or a special service district or a quasi-government agency. Um, they're meant to be um, broad enough that a lot of people can use them regardless of their agency's um, responsibilities. And then, as I mentioned earlier, um, SSRS is um, series specific retention schedule. Okay, so retention and disposition. I told you we would talk about this a little bit more. Um, there are two types of dispositions, so permanent and non-permanent. You can get rid of it or you have to transfer it to archives. Um, if it is permanent, um, you'll transfer it to archives once the in-office retention has been met. Um, and that means that you are no longer responsible as an agency to manage it. Um, so there's a difference between um, in-office retention and then just managing something in office or off-site, um, which I'll explain a little bit here in a second. Um, but if your records have a non-permanent disposition, um, you need to manage them until retention has been met. So that can be either in-office or off-site. Um, off-site can be a storage unit, um, the state record center, um, you know, if you're, I do realize that if you're a very small special service district um, or a very small municip municipality, that might be, you know, the basement of your building. Um, that's fine as long as um, you know how it's being treated, you check on it, it's secure. Either way, you can manage it in office or offsite. Um, once retention has been met for non permanent records, you can destroy them. Um, so they have to be burned or shredded um, in a way that they cannot be put back together. So you can't run over them. You can't um, scatter them in someone's farm and let the animals eat them up, anything like that. Um, we've had some crazy stories about that. Yes. Um, so make sure it's either burned or shredded, um, but feel free. Or if it's a hard drive, smash it with a hammer, um, those kinds of things. Just make sure it can't be put back together. 
So again, managing in office versus offsite. Um, and this is when your agency is still has its in office retention. Um, for example, so if say you are a school district or high school, um, you're required to manage your uh, transcripts in office for 40 years. Um, however, it's a permanent disposition. So after 40 years is up, whether or not you have kept them in your office or kept them in a storage site, um, you'll transfer them to archives um, after that 40 years. So that's what I meant by having an in-office retention. Um, it's how long you are responsible for managing those records before you either destroy them or send them off to archives. So managing an office, there's filing cabinets, drawers, hard drives, thumb drives, databases. I mean, there are probably endless ways to create and manage and store a record. Um, so just be familiar with your office space, um, with your IT department so that you know where you can find your records. And also make sure they're well labeled. If you have you know, a dozen files um, on your computer labeled, you know, just in case or trash later, then you're not gonna have any idea what that file is. So just make sure things are labeled well enough that you know at a glance what they are. Um, you can have a contracted offsite storage. So, you know, one of those um, pay to store kind of places that is acceptable um, as long as this area is secure. Um, and that you uh, have access to that um, facility when you need it. Um, remember, these are government records that you're taking care of, and we don't want them to be accessed by people who uh, do not have access to them or who aren't supposed to have access to them. So please just make sure if you do that, um, it's a reputable uh, facility and it is secure. And um, we also offer free offsite storage through archives. Um, it's our record center located in Clearfield. Um, it's free for any governmental agency to use. Um, access is secure. Um, you can have your stuff back at any time. Um, or if you just need, you know, a couple files out of there for, say, a grandma request, um, they also offer encrypted scan on demand that's sent to you via email where they'll just pull that file from that box um, and scan it to you. So you're not getting boxes back and forth in the mail. Um, again, that's a free service. And if you want to know more, please reach out to your room specialist and we'll be happy to help you with that. OK, so grandma and records access. So grandma stands for Government Records Access and Management Act. So grandma um, is Utah code 63G chapter two. Uh, it's used to enforce government uh, transparency and allow the public access to government records. Um, so a grandma request does not necessarily have to come through the open records portal. Um, it can be any written request for records that should be considered a grandma request. So whether that's an email through the open records portal um, or written letters, um, anything that asks any anything that asks for a record should be considered a grandma request in written form. Um, you should respond as soon as possible. You do have up to 10 business days, however, if you need time to look for it, um, or five days for an expedited request. Um, and you'll know if it's expedited, the, uh, the requester will, will say so. Um, if you issue, issue a denial of request, you need to explain why. Um, so just what part of the law says that, you know, the public can't have access to this. Um, and if you need help looking up grandma law, um, you can contact Rosemary Cundiff, our grandma ombudsman. She's an excellent resource for all things grandma. Um, you also need to let the requester know how they can appeal uh, if you do deny them. So how the steps they need to take to contact your your CAO um, and and uh, contact information for that. Um, and also not responding is a form of a denial. So if that 10 business day 
um, time frame passes, it's considered an automatic denial. Um, and you should perhaps just out of courtesy, warn your CAO, hey, I didn't respond to this request, you may see an appeal, um, and this is why. So whether or not you are the grandma responder, um, you should at least know grandma rules um, and look up the Utah code um, relating to grandma. It could be very helpful for the grandma person in your agency. So whether that's one specific person, several people, um, someone on your legal team, if you have access to that, um, it's just helpful to know who the grandma responder is and how you can help them out. And again, contact uh, Rosemary Cundiff if you have any grandma questions. Um, her info I'll post at the end of this presentation. So we talked briefly about the Open Records Portal and the Public Notice website. Um, but the Open Records Portal is the website that helps you manage grandma requests. Um, as I said, even if you don't respond to grandma, you should at least be familiar with the Open Records Portal and um, the grandma law. And the Public Notice website is the website you're required to use to post public notices for open and public meetings. Um, so those posts should include meeting minutes, recordings, agendas, um, and any applicable meeting materials. And again, if you even if you aren't responsible for posting to the public notice website, you should at least check it out and know how it works. Okay, so your agency's records. Who, what, when, where, why, how? Like, you are the records manager, rec records manager for your agency, so you should know what records you need to manage. Um, to do this, you can look at your agency's functions. If you have an HR department, um, if you have an accounting department, if you have an admin, you know those are all those sections are all going to be, you know, creating records related to human resources, related to policy and procedure. Um, related to accounts payable and receivable. So if you're not sure where to start, look at your agency um, sections as a whole um, to give you some, some idea of, of the kind of records that your agency is creating. Um, so you should know, know who uh, created it. If it's you know, a security request or an email request, um, you know, spam, something like that, you know that it's probably created by your technology department, your IT department. If it's going to be accounts payable, if it's a receipt, you know to probably go to your accounting department. So you don't have to know specifically who made it, but just know if you have a question about it, which section or department or division you can go to to, to get answers. Um, know what information is in it. If it's just a receipt, it's going to be managed differently than if it's your published annual budget. Um, they have different retentions and different dispositions. So at least know in, at a glance what kind of information is going to be on your records. Um, know when it was created, because that way you can manage the retention for it. If you don't know when it was made, you won't know how long to keep it. Um, know where it's stored. Is it online? Is it at your off-site storage site? Is it in your office? Is it in your coworker's office? Um, knowing where you keep your records um, can help you manage them. And again, going back to the slide about saving money, managing your space um, will just help your agency. Now, so know why it was created. Um, that will help with the re with retention. Is this created because it's um, part of our department's policy and procedure and it needs to live forever? Or was this created because it's letting us know that there's birthday cake in the break room? And so we can throw it away as soon as the cake is done. So know why the record was created. And then knowing how it was created, um, what format is it? Is it an email? Is it um, paper? Is it a floppy disk, a CD? Um, Knowing what formats you have can help you 
um, figure out the best way forward for managing your records as a whole. So this is not necessary, but it is recommended um, keeping an inventory um, of the records that you have and the series that you have registered with the archives. Um, it might just be the most efficient way uh, to manage your records. So here we've got a um, inventory template, which is available on our website. Um, you don't have to be super specific of every single piece of paper you have in your agency. But if you know you've got all sorts of accounts payable kept together, you can put that down. Hey, accounts payable uh, from this year, um, the retention is going to be four years or seven years if you're state government, um, and then we can throw it away. And it's just going to be, not only is it a good reminder for you, what you have in your custody, but if you leave and someone has to come in and start this all over again, they're not going to have to do a lot of the legwork. Um, to figure out what you have and what needs to be managed. So I mentioned series specific retention schedules um, a little bit earlier. So a series is a group of similar records kept together for retention and disposition purposes. Um, as you can see, the accounts payable and receivable um, example here is you keep them all together as a daily finance series. Um, because they have the same retention and disposition. Um, so a series specific retention schedule is a schedule applied to a single series. Um, it may or may not follow a general retention schedule, which is one of the schedules we created archives. Um, if it does not follow a general retention schedule, um, it needs to be approved by the records management committee um, and you'll have to work with your RIM specialist to um, get that process moving. So for example, going back to the accounts payable and receivable series of daily finance. If for some legal reason you need to keep your daily finances 10 years, the, then the general retention schedule doesn't apply to that. You'll have to come to the records management committee or at least have your RIM specialist come to the records management committee um, to get that 10 year retention for daily finance approved because it's a series specific schedule outside of the retention schedule. Um, and I apologize if it's confusing. Um, hopefully if you still have more questions after this, please reach out to your room specialist um, or let us know in the chat if you have more questions about um, series specific versus general retention schedules. Um, you can always look up your agency's retention schedules on our website. I'm actually going to show you how to get there. If it will cooperate. Okay, so you're going to head to archives.utah.gov. You're going to head to records management, and then you're going to head to retention schedules. So here you can search all the general retention schedules we've created. Um, so those would be those big bucket, basic, you know, accounting, um, audits, um, daily reports, you know, something that every agency creates regardless of, of the purpose of that agency. If you want to look up your agency specific schedules, you're going to come down here to find your agency's series specific schedules. Um, so for example, I'll just type in archives. Um, we are the division of archives. Okay, and then you'll come to this retention and classification report. And this will show you a list of every series um, that you have created with the archives. Now, you may have a lot of series you manage um, on your own with your own approved retention schedules if you're a local government, um, and that's fine. They, you know, if you have created in-house series, we'd like 
to know just so if we get questions um, we can give them give people the right answer um, but you don't have to create a series with us um, if you don't want to um, if you plan on using the record center or eventually sending stuff to the archives we will need to give you a series number so let us know um, but as you can see here it lists all of our series that we've got um, this is the series number and then this is the title of the series so these are all um, series specific retention schedules so if we just click on this one's financial transactions so as you can see this one is authorized by a general retention schedule it's one of those big bucket schedules that we at archives has have created um, but it will tell you um, your series number the title it will give you the date description of your records so if you're just starting out and you don't know what your agency has, um, this is a good tool for you to see what's been done before. Okay, so series specific schedules for local governments. Um, local governments have the option to create their own um, schedules in-house. Um, if you choose to do that, it needs to be approved by your governing body, um, it needs to be publicly available, um, and we request a courtesy copy just so we can have it on file in case we get questions. Um, your governing body may be a board, it might be your county commission, um, it might be your city council, it really depends on what kind of um, governmental entity that you are. Um, state governments do not have this option to create their own schedules in-house. Um, so if you have more questions or if the, you know, you can't find a general retention schedule that works for you, um, let us know and we can work with you to set up a series specific retention schedule. And local governments, if you don't want to do the work to create your own schedules, again, we're happy to create series specific schedules for you as well. Um, and set you up with some general retention schedules. It's just personal preference for the local governments, um, whether or not you choose to do it in-house or with help from archives. So lastly, let's talk about um, resources available to you as a records manager or records officer. Um, our website has a lot of guidelines, training videos, webinars like this, um, quick glance publications, one sheeters, um, you name it, we've probably got it on our website. So if you head to archives.utah.gov and under that um, records management tab, you'll see a section for guidelines. Um, we also send out a monthly newsletter um, to all registered records officers um, just to update you on law changes, um, records management committee decisions, hot topics. Um, so for instance, we've had a lot of questions about, you know, how to keep Zoom meetings um, or how long you're supposed to keep them or how do Zoom meetings even work? Are they a record? Um, that kind of information comes out in the monthly newsletter um, as well as upcoming training opportunities and conferences. And if you're after all this still feeling completely overwhelmed, you don't know where to start, what to do, um, we offer uh, free in agency or video conference um, consultations. We are happy to come in and go through your basement, go through your storage room, look at what you have and help you with um, what steps you need to take to get things back on track and get things uh, manageable. So we are always happy to um, help and come in and, and take a look at what you've got. So I promised you a lot of contact information throughout the presentation. Here you go. So again, I'm Avalon Snell. Um, I am the RIM specialist for special districts, education agencies, and some state agencies, um, in particular, the Department of Health, um, Department of Natural Resources, the Division, Department of Heritage and Arts, and the Commerce, uh, Department of Commerce. Renee Wilson, 
is the RIM specialist for all the other state agencies and elected offices. Heidi Steed is the RIM specialist for local governments and law enforcement. And Matt Pierce is the RIM specialist for general retention schedules. So if you have a GRS question or even a series specific question, um, feel free to contact Matt and he can find uh, the best solution for you as far as um, schedules. Um, Rosemary Cundiff is the grandma ombudsman. Dylan Mace is the administrator for the Open Records Portal and Public Notice website. So if you have um, issues logging on um, or if you are having a hard time with the interface, um, contact Dylan and he can help you troubleshoot through that. And then our State Records Center um, is our offsite storage in Clearfield. Um, feel free to contact them if you have questions about um, sending and receiving your boxes, or if you have questions about their scan on demand, they are happy to help you out as well. So I hope that you found this webinar. So you now became a record, so you just became a records officer. Now what? Um, please feel free to contact us if you have any additional questions, comments, concerns. Um, we at Archives are here to help you. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you.